Welcome back, Disc Golf fans, to the final round coverage of the 2021 OTB Open presented by Innova Champion Discs. This is the Front Nine coverage. I'm Brian Earhart, joined here one more time by Nate Perkins. And I, I honestly have to say, for this being a ball golf course that we are playing on, this is one of the most enjoyable tracks that I've gotten to commentate on in quite some time, Nate. I completely agree with you. We need a counter for how long our total roller distance is, Brian. I know. This it's is through the roof. And and such technical power rollers as well. And, and I think this card is going to obviously give us that. Tons of star power here. Tons of shot making potential. And still all within reach of Eagle McMahon. He has not quite earned this win yet. Let's see if anyone can make a jump moving into hole number one. We, the most common play we've seen is the power roller because of these two guardian trees. We watched Adam Hammes throw an absolute beautiful shot get knocked down by those trees. So we are going to likely see from, from all Beach, of these players California, some sort of, of roller shot. World champion, Paul Macbeth. Paul is actually going air shot here. He is going air shot. Interesting. You know what he's throwing? Likely a force. Disc. He is a huge fan of the force. He likes the force over the nuke. Yeah, not throwing the wide rim stuff. Uh, Ooh. That needs to pick a side. Yeah, well, you weren't yeah, not really sure if he was... Oh, and he's out of bounds. No. Next up, from Blacksburg, huh. Virginia, James Conrad. Yeah, you weren't really sure what he was throwing there, but... This is a player that this course suits so well. James, as much as he is an amazing hyzer flip thrower, loves the Annie to flat shot, loves flexes, loves rollers. This is going to be a treat to watch. And we saw him commit to the roller and actually jump off the end of the stage in round two. And he stays on the tee pad this time and lays down a photon. This looks great. Yeah, perfect positioning. Backwards hat, James, today. From Tampa Bay, Florida, Calvin Heimberg. Yeah, we've got a sick card, Brian. Are you kidding? Yeah, James, Nico LeCastro's Calvin, up next. And Calvin hitting the huge ace yesterday on number 15. Wow. Huge air shot. Down. Oh, okay. That's the tree. That's 575. From St. Louis, Missouri, Nico Locastro. And Nico also known to be one of the most amazing roller throwers the game's ever seen, especially laying down kind of stable distance drivers. He does not even like to flip rollers that much. He really likes to lay them down hard. Yeah, he likes to get them down pretty quick, too. Yeah. Another player that's in the past, you know, few years has really committed to that flex angle. And look at this. Going right side. Oh. Takes a little hop right over Calvin's disc. Wow, Nico, that is in perfect position on yeah. the right side. Paul's air shot going out of bounds. What a huge miss. And look at this line from Paul. It looks simple, but that that was a really calculated hyzer flip. Yeah, he had two ceilings to hit, and the yeah. second ceiling is 90% through the flight. It's an amazing shot right there. James getting to go a little bit easier shot. Oh, and clips that early stump right there. Lay up for a par. And he goes in circle one. And again, we've got another day here, Brian, where the wind just wasn't really a big factor. No, absolutely beautiful weather all week.
James is just going to lay up next to the basket. Par's fine. There is a lot of ground to make up, though. Eagle is not going to be slowing down at 23 under par to start the round. And Nico gets a pretty simple birdie to start the round. Pretty big mistake to turn that force over onto the green, but a world-class up and down right there from Macbeth. Absolutely. And Calvin cleaning up his birdie. These final rounds for Calvin are always something special. We've seen him make some incredible runs in the past. Uh, the round at DDO last year comes to mind. Moving into number two, 445. Yeah, this shot, we've seen people really go for the power turnover. Haven't seen many rollers trying to get to this green. The hole was actually designed for Calvin to go up the gut, but we haven't seen a single player go that route on the right side. Oh, and he's still going eagle on this 445 foot par three. Yeah, and that's right there. That's awesome world-class shot. 445 sky turnover with an eagle. And this is right in Nico's bread and butter wheelhouse. He loves this angle. Just a little inside. Yeah. Tree? Nico did not see it come down. The two meter rule again is in effect and that it can lead to some heartbreaking results. Imagine Paul's going Undertaker here. I see the Paul Macbeth stamp on this disc. I'm guessing he's going to go harder flex with an onyx. Yeah. Didn't quite have the height to come out of it. Second shot in a row that he's kind of just turned over too much. And this is a Tesla coming out of James. I believe a nine speed control driver. Or is that a Volt? Yeah, I believe that's his Volt, Brian. A little bit short. Also not giving it the air time. Yeah, the water, water's only 20 feet past the pin here, so it kind of keeps these players from giving it a, a real bid. And James is gonna have an easy par. Paul is going to definitely give this a run. He knows he's playing for the win. What a birdie from Calvin. Again, we've seen just over the past couple years, he's just gotten really good at making these final pushes. And the past couple shots that he's thrown have looked so deliberate and under control. And slow start for Paul. Still plenty of opportunities left.
All right, hole three, we've got a low ceiling forehand gap on the left side, but I believe we're gonna see four right hand backhand shots through the gap on the right. There's an OB green that you wanna finish in front or to the left of. The basket is up on a mound. You've gotta clear some OB on your approach. Much more forgiving hole for anyone with a sidearm. James is gonna to have to really bite off a lot in his, his tee shot to open up that putter to the green. Prime position right yeah. there for Calvin. Should be no problem for a sidearm. Yeah, I'm excited to watch Nico throw some of these flex lines. Almost looks like he's lining this one up on Heiser, but yeah, flat to, mm -hmm. flat to Heiser. And that's what's interesting about Nico's game. He used to be a very predominant uh, Heiser flip thrower and then kind of made a transition around 2013, it seemed like, where the flex line just seemed to make sense for him and really hasn't stopped since. And we're, we're seeing two players here, Calvin and Nico, were kind of in the discussion for this tournament because of the, the low ceiling theme. Yeah. And James is going nitro here. He can just smash on this and know that it's gonna stable up left, left side of the green. Yeah, that should be just fine for him. Hopefully far enough right to where he doesn't have to throw too steep of a turnover into that slope. And Paul is also going with a backhand straight at it, and that's turned. Is that the Luna? I think he was going with a, with a base plastic Luna, trying to throw kind of a softer hyzer flip. Yeah, that's exactly what I was expecting Nico to do. Three feet for birdie. Flattening nicely. Yep, yep circle one for James believe that's his reactor. Oh, yep. Just you see that patch that he just skipped off of. Mm -hmm. Such thicker grass than everything else around it. And he's going to have a long putt for birdie here. Oh. Okay. So... Let's quickly yes, rewind that back. Uphill, no problem. That's his third birdie in a row. He's three for three. We've seen him start final rounds like this often. And he is beginning to be in the hunt. Even at 35 or 38 feet that he had right there, he's still all upper body. Yeah. All the weights on his front foot. Has such a beautiful push putt as Paul's just misses a bit low. And James is on the board. One down. I think everybody was speculating that, you know, 30 under par was going to be a number to shoot for for the week. And uh, Eagle is definitely on pace for that. The rest of these players have it within them, though. There are still... So many birdies left to be had. And two for, for, two for three for Nico. Not too bad. Yeah, Paul has to be frustrated at three straight pars. Yeah, just, a, just numerous misfires already. Moving to number four. We have not seen an eagle yet on this hole, so you, you wonder if the players know that and are just trying to pick out what the conservative spot is to get the birdie coming down the stretch in this tournament. Yeah, it's only a thousand feet, but it it's low ceiling enough off the tee that it's hard to yeah. get that first 500 or 550 that you would like to mm -hmm. attack for eagle. Yeah, there's not, not a lot you can cheat on this hole with that Mando off to the left side. Be clean. Go forever. Every shot out of his hand Whoa. so far has looked it's just so clean and so deliberate. He looks very in control right now. 
Well, he cleared 500 right there in the air. Yeah. Low ceiling flex line. And we're going to see another power roller from Nico. Again, look at this. He's going to lay this down probably on that slope. It sets up beautifully for this shot. Yeah. And he's just got to worry about that Mando. Oh, oh that okay. might have been a fortunate tree right there. We did see James Conrad throw that same shot and cross that Mando mm -hmm. line yesterday. And let's see if he makes a adjustment. It looks like he's going to. He's just going to trust his distance. That's exactly what he wanted. Perfect position. He can throw that exact same shot again and get a very easy spot for birdie. There's one. Big flare forward. Oh, yeah. This is a tough shot right here because you're kind of throwing at the out of bounds on the right and you just have to trust your stability and also you've got that low ceiling right in front of you. Mm -hmm. Well done from Nico. Yeah, he should be able to throw a pretty similar shot up to the basket from there. Panic from James. He's going all out on this shot. Just doesn't flatten in time. Still in a decent spot to get up and down for birdie. Smoke that shot, maybe just a little bit higher and mm -hmm. could have had some opportunity there. Finally, we get to Calvin's drive. Oh, no. oh. that's got to fade out quick. And Whoa. it does. Oh, breathe it, a sigh of relief. It skipped right outside of one of those stakes that marks the OB on the hill. That is a blessing from the disc golf gods. I couldn't quite see how close, it looked like he was almost pin high there, Brian. That was a big shot. James putting his to circle one as well. This is for Eagle. If there's anyone that hit, would hit a putt like that, it would be Paul. We've seen him do it so many times. Okay, so Calvin not quite pin high. Looks like he still has 70 in here. But again, that's going to be his fourth birdie in a row if it's close enough. And I do believe it's only about 10 feet long. Yeah, it shows, shows you just how hard the eagle is. I mean, Calvin smoked yeah. both of those shots. James just setting the Nomad in there. He has not missed a circle one putt so far at this tournament. And we've noticed this round, Nico has not been taking as much time as we've seen him in the past. And normally that means he's feeling confident and he's feeling like he's in the moment with his game. And, I mean, it's working out. He's on the chase card, making a move, three for four. Calvin gets his fourth birdie in a row. The Destroyer is essential on tour. One of the most versatile distance drivers in Innova's lineup. The new Halo plastic is probably the prettiest plastic that, that Innova has in their, in their lineup. It makes for a, a really cool disc to bag. Very confident in throwing the Destroyer and keeping it in, in bounds. 
at far ranges. All right, hole five, 454, only 5% of the field has carded a birdie on this hole. One of the most difficult par threes we've seen. There is a little bit of a right to left today that might help that high hyzer out a little bit. Let's see if Calvin can get one close here, going high. Oh. oh, and looks like he hit early. That's a gap we have not seen someone take yet. It's a tight, tight, low ceiling gap, but I, I, I understand why he took it. It is the most direct way of getting to the basket, but you do have to hit that gap. And this is exactly what I expected out of Nico. That's got to curl up. Flip up. Here it comes. I should be about circle two. Definitely a look for Nico. No. Making the adjustment from yesterday, trying to throw the hyzer, and roller just does not pay off for James. And the players have been making that roller look easy, but it really isn't with the with the eucalyptus branches hanging down mm -hmm. on that left side and, and the one tree that James just squared up, it's difficult to, to hit the gap and lay down yeah. on a good cut angle. And I believe this is the new Scorch from Discraft. Oh, and he knows it's flipping too quick. It's, yeah. That's a pretty flippy... It's a pretty flippy disc, and you kind of have to trust to throw it just a little bit Anheuser to get it to lay down, but they roll a long, long way if you get them right. And James has thrown his second shot a little short. That's going to be a bogey up and down for him. First blemish of the card. That's a huge recovery shot right there to keep it rolling. Yeah. This hole just feels like a mini par four with how far away most players are from the basket. I don't see too many people where Nico is even. Most shots I feel like end up, you know, 90 to 100 feet away. And this is, yeah, this is the closest I've seen in a bit. <gasps> oh, he loves those little nose up flex shots. That was deja vu. I mean, that looks so similar to his putt on 17 at, yes. at Waco to seal the deal. To get it to swing like that, it's just, there's so mm -hmm. much touch in that, in the spin on that. And he's throwing a pretty stable putter. I believe that's the Cenus that he likes yeah, to do that I, with. Yes. Kind of getting it to flatten at the end of its flight. And it's a safe run at the basket, too. You know you're not going to go that far. He's not running it with intentions of, of jamming it through the chains. But we do see a bogey from James and a few pars moving into number six. This is one we've seen some ridiculous spike forehands on, but this wind was a little bit different. It made it a little bit more challenging. The crosswind was not there, so a lot more players were going low. We haven't seen that line yet, Brian. Low ceiling turnover is not easy. He's going to be just outside circle one. And this was a hole, actually, that Calvin and James were discussing what they felt like was the best option in practice. I got to catch a little bit of that conversation. And there's so many options on mm -hmm. these holes. And Nico throwing a pretty common line, that little flex sidearm. Looks like Paul's going to try to follow suit. Looks like he's got a force in his hand. It's a little high. Oh, oh yeah. and he parts it. It's such a fine line on that forehand to hit the low ceiling and get get far enough to catch the short grass to get the good skip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a great shot from Paul, and James is going to have to work a little bit harder with his backhand line. We saw how touchy Calvin's was. Oh, 
Ooh, James's vault just a little bit too high. Hopefully that bogey didn't kill his momentum. Sticks it right next to the pin. That's a great up and down. This is Calvin for another birdie. It's, it's just one of the most picture perfect push putts that, <laughs> forgive me for all the alliteration, but all the, it's the most perfect push putt that I've ever seen. It's flat, it, it has such a simple trajectory to it, and it just falls right into the basket. He is zoned in right now. Hey, this is Paul Macbeth. Thank you for watching. If you haven't ch had a chance yet, go check out the Paul Macbeth Foundation. If you can help in any way, please reach out. And uh, I look forward to uh, putting more projects and more courses in the ground. Yeah. Hole seven, par four, 578. A couple mandos on the right side. This is the ideal landing zone right here. And then the OB kind of pinches around the green. Are we gonna see some wide rollers? Calvin is definitely going wide. Ooh, he's going just left, turnover backhand. Another line that we don't see too often. Decent shot. And this is the scorch again. Miss it. Oh, mm. that was... I believe that's right next to that second Mando tree. It'll be in okay position from there three outside Look backhands and that actually puts him into a great spot he can throw a sidearm wide if he wants to and then james goes for the more inside backhand and look at this shot let's do a, actually a quick form check on the roller on the from roller Paul. yeah i'd like to i'd like to see here they're filming from the back side, but look at how his back arches last second. Ooh, actually on this one, it was kind of, oh yeah, there's the body English last second. He kind of leans his entire body into the shot. It was a flippier disc that he threw. So he didn't have to quite lean as exactly. back enough. Yeah, kind of some the, the ones that Nico likes to throw, he arches his back way back. Paul likes to kind of shape the roller a bit. Calvin's inside 20 for Brady. He's going to be six down through seven. And with Eagle just a few holes behind, he is starting to put some, mm -hmm. some real pressure on. Nico coming in softly. Yeah, should be just fine. Wow. What, what a shot! That little follow through that he had to to make sure he hit that gap. There we go. James gets another birdie. He's back on the horse. Undoes that undoes that bogey. A couple yeah. holes prior. It's a big moment right there. I mean, he goes bogey par, and then he's in a tough position on one of the easiest par fours, and it's a big big moment to get up and down right there for James. Just low for Nico. You saw him kind of short arm that follow through. Tends to do, tends to do that when he doesn't get confident in that putt, which has been happening the past couple of years. And there's a birdie for Paul. He's slowly making a charge yet again. And he's tied with Calvin. Yeah. 
And Calvin takes a stroke back. He has only missed one hole, Nate. Yeah, and it's one of the one of the tougher par threes. And speaking of, we are gonna move into hole number eight. This, I would say, is the toughest birdie to get. It's low ceiling flex, super specific. It can't be a hard flex that has too much right to left. It is a very, very, very tough shot. Calvin going with a Halo Destroyer, I believe. Oh, and this looks good. Mm. That ceiling is so low, so late in the flight. Nearly perfect right there, just a foot too high. Early from Paul. Just completely opened up before the disc came out of his hand. Here's the nitro again from James. Oh, if that gets back on edge. Oh, and he got back so quick. That's the shot. Mm -hmm. Wow. He got on that with so much Anheuser, put his entire body into that flex shot. That disc is super overstable. And Nico going similar flex line. That's coming out a little early, but it still might be okay. Yeah, circle two look for, for Nico. Still nice to get on this hole. Wow, Paul is on 15's green. He's going over that outside hill. Okay, puts himself to 20 feet. Oh, Ooh. just right. Would have been a fantastic birdie for Nico, but he's just going to take yet another par. Yeah, four in a row. Can't quite get it going. Little high, but luckily hits the flagpole, so he has a stress-free tap-in. That just stayed in the air right there. Mm -hmm. Wow. There's James. The way that James is able to slam those traveling on Anheuser mm -hmm. like that. It's definitely unique. <laughs> Not easy to do. Paul gets up and down from a very tough spot, takes his par. And they're never like high in the chains either. They're always right mm -hmm. over the rim on Annie. Thanks so much to Gatekeeper Media for filming today. If you want to support support what I'm doing or follow what I'm doing, you can follow me on James underscore Conrad underscore I I I on Instagram, or you can go to JamesConradDiscGolf.com to get some JC gear. Hole nine, twelve hundred footer. This. OB green right there is right at 450. And then it is about 500 feet on the short side of the pond into the green here. We saw an absolute monster of a roller with this disc right here. Let's see if he can repeat. There was a bit of a headwind today, so it's a little different shot. But I think j this disc is overstable enough that he's able to do it. Oh my goodness. Huh? It was, is that better than yesterday's, Brian? It's further right. It's going to leave him more of an open air shot. Yeah, the catch cam had to stop filming. It was going too long. <laughs> Calvin throws an air shot to the right side. He'll be able to get up there for a birdie. Just getting out to the right side is a big deal. The scorch again? Scorch again. What speed is that, Brian? Scorch, it feels to me like they took the heat, which is a 9 speed, and just stretched the rim out to an 11 speed. So a actually a phenomenal disc for a lot of different types of shots. Paul just catching one of those trees on the right. 
There we go. That's a good cut angle. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anything past that green is spectacular. Calvin having to go way right. Boom. Miss it inside. Wow. wow. What a shot. Just so much speed coming out of his hand. That is, that's way up there. Kind of a conservative play for Paul, but he is going to be up in position to get a birdie. Nico going inside over the water. Oh, did it slow it down? Oh, and he makes just it. Just enough there. And finally, we get to James's shot. This is incredible. Heiser flip, slow drift to the right. James wants a run back. Two days in a row. He wants that eagle that he tried running yesterday. Okay, Calvin's got like 450 into the green from here. This looks good. Sticks it again. That's another birdie for Calvin. And that's why we continue to see him on these lead and chase cards because he's so accurate from from that distance right there. And it's really hard to throw that accurate from a, the fairway. You know, having to plant directly behind a mini and still throw that far, it's very tough to space your footwork out to be that under control. Yeah, it is a little bit more difficult than the mm -hmm. T-pad. And it's, you know, one of the reasons why practicing in the field with a mini is, is very important because that's where a lot of strokes come from is, you know, getting up and down on these par fours and par fives. And, and it's one of those things, Brian, that you, th you, you think about and you struggle with early on in your disc golf career. But at this point, these players aren't really thinking about their footwork anymore. No. They're not thinking about, oh, I need to place it right here. It just kind of happens because they've been doing it for so long. And thank you for the rewind. Look at this downhill death putt from Paul. 45 footer birdie. And that was a gritty birdie. He was up against the tree and then he threw across the water left and then had to throw a low sidearm to the top of the hill. He is starting to catch some fire. And Calvin yet again just looks calm, under control. Has only missed two holes. And James got hole nine all three rounds. Must be nice. Must be nice, James. Nico taps in his birdie as well. And there you have it for the front nine. We have some players making a run, especially Calvin Heimberg, seven down. Seven. Only missing the two hardest par threes on the course. We will see what happens on this back nine. So he's within five now. Ricky is within four. Eagle is still the man to beat here. Thank you again to Gatekeeper Media for this wonderful coverage. Make sure to subscribe to them on YouTube. I'm Brian Earhart. He's Nathan Perkins. We are signing off. We'll catch you on the back nine.